So on this episode, it's all about one particular coral, the ins and outs, the whole story. So let's get to it. So ever since I got into the hobby and I was researching what coral to put in my tank, there was always one coral that caught my eye and was always high on my bucket list. I could never find it no matter how many places I went to or frag swaps. It always seems to be that elusive piece that I could never find. Well, recently in Lancaster at that fish place, that pet place at the Reef Conservation Society's frag swap, I was walking down the rows and um, stopped by Reef Connections table. Uh, I looked in the tank and there they were. So I asked Will, the owner, how much were they, fit my budget, and now it's in my tank. Well, let's give you a close up and give you all the ins and outs on um, the coral history, how to take care of it, and give you a close up look of what it actually looks like. So here it is. This is the Parietes coral, or Christmas tree rock, uh, named after the worms that are on, on the rock, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, they inhabit most of the tropical oceans and seas around the world. The Parietes genus are some of the longest lived species of coral on the earth, with some colonies being estimated to be thousands of years old. They have multiple growth forms from flat encrusting flat leaf-like sheets, massive dome-shaped, and even branching colonies. It has been theorized that the growth patterns are affected by the water flow and some colonies have a combination of all these traits, and this depending on how turbulent the flow is where the coral is growing. Uh, speaking of growth, if you are looking for a fast-growing coral, this is not the one for you. While they can grow into massive colonies that are over 26 feet in height and 16 feet in diameter, it is only estimated that they grow only about a third of an inch a year. Now, let's get on to the worms that are on this coral and give it this gem-like appearance. The parietes also have a unique trait in that they are home to this fan-like worm, as I said, known as the Bismo or Christmas tree worm, which uh, gets its name from the variety of spectacular colors and shapes that they come in. Uh, these worms bore into the skeleton of the coral and begin the commensal relationship and giving the entire coral, like I said, a gem-like appearance. They come in a lot of different uh, colors. As you can see here, there's reds, there's, there's the whites, and there's blues. And as you could just tell just a, a few seconds ago, the way they snap back into the coral is something to see. Now, as far as care is concerned, while being considered a difficult coral at first, once acclimated, it can be considered to be a very hardy coral. Uh, the parietes shed their outer surface layer to remove unwanted waste and algae, and this is something that I've witnessed personally uh, the second day that it was in my tank as all this uh, layer started peeling off the, the coral. Kind of gave me a fright, but upon research, I knew that I had nothing to worry about. Um, this waste, however, may want to be removed uh, from the water of smaller systems um, through basically a water changes before it fouls up that water. As far as flow is concerned, uh, these corals inhabit most reef environments from reef fronts, lagoons, uh, the base of coral mounts, as well as sandy sloping or flat substrate. However, the flow in these areas is usually turbulent with high current, so Relatively high flow is usually preferred for this coral. It seems to improve the health not only of the coral, but also the worms that inhabit it. As far as lighting is concerned, I would recommend starting the coral off on the sand bed of your tank and then moving it to a higher light. But remember, if it's exposed to too much light, this coral will bleach, so keep a close eye on it. After all, aside from the worms, this is an SPS coral and should be treated as such. Always choose to side on the most safest area for the coral, and if the coral likes where it is, leave it where it is. As far as feeding is concerned, like most SPS, 
the parietes receive a majority of their nutrients from the symbiotic relationship it shares with its, with its zooxanthellae. Uh, but they also can benefit from liquid coral and planktonic foods as well as dry foods such as reef roids, reef chili, and coral candy to name a few. Um, these foods not only benefit the coral but also the worms that inhabit it. Now speaking of the worms as we take a closer look at them, this is at heart an SPS coral, but the worms add a different layer of interest to it. Since I have it in my tank, I, I stare at these worms constantly. I look for them to come out and snap back in because it gives basically a rock-like coral some movement. As you can see here, the, the, the Christmas tree worm is fanning itself out, and in the next scene, you'll see what I mean about when it snaps itself back in. So here we are looking at the rock again and there you go. So it's always interesting to see when something swims by it how the worms react to it. Well that's basically it for this week. Uh, what I'm going to do coming up is I'm going to post uh, some parameters that are suggested for the coral as far as uh, optimal for its health. I also want to remind you that in the information section of this video you'll find um, the information for Reef Connection and Will, so give him a shout, give him a look, and see what he has to offer. Uh, if you're a first time viewer of the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the uh, bell if you like what you, you see, so you can get notified of videos coming up. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this, and this is Scott, and I will see you soon around the Reef Tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.